This is the most popular Gmod Tires add-on of all time. It has over 37,000 subscriptions, but does it live up to the hype? Hello, Pez wearers. The 2nd, 11th Doctor and 12th Doctor Tireses, collectively known as the Toyota Tireless, is largely regarded as the best Tireless add-on of all time. I'm going to show you the basis of it, all its setting options, the three different Tireses it comes with, the Easter eggs, and much, much more. It has three versions, all of their own custom features. There's the 2012 to 2013 one, which is the 11th Doctor's version, the 2014 to 2017 one, which is the 12th Doctors, and the 2017 to 2012 one, which is a combination of the both, and the one with all these custom settings and things, but I'll go over it all in order so you see that towards the end. As a whole, this is probably the most iconic TARDIS exterior of all time, but they do change slightly from TARDIS to TARDIS. So the 2012 to 2013 one has three skins on its main exterior, that basically just changed the window colour, and this is the exterior used on all of these versions, except for the Tom the Doctor version, which uses this exterior, which looks decently similar, but is technically completely different. I'll talk about that in a second. But this is the main one, and with its default settings, it looks like this. And it's just an incredible recreation of the one using the show. Like, there's literally nothing I can pick out that looks wrong or out of place. It's just very well done. It has all the most iconic parts, like the St. John Ambulance sign, the TARDIS blue, and even the size of it, because it is actually really big, especially when compared to things like the 2023 Plus TARDIS. But yeah, this is the first and probably the most recognisable skin on this. And basically, all of the skins do is just change the windows. So this one has four black panels and two what I'd call textured panels, which are just like these grey ones that are filled in a bit more. In my opinion, this and the first Doctor's exterior are just like the TARDIS exteriors. I might be a bit biased in that, but you know. Seeming this was used during the height of Reason Doctor 2 in the 50th year, it's no surprise it's this recognisable. And I think it's one of the best ones, so I'm not complaining at all. And it has so many smaller details on it, and they look really good in the add-on too. For instance, this door lock has a really great metallic shiny texture to it, as well as this subtle gradient of dirt as you go down the exterior, until you get to the bottom, which is just like really messy, which actually makes perfect sense. And to be fair, the general texture work on this is just really good. It's very high quality and it just looks just like it did in the show. And then the second skin changes the windows to this sort of lime green colour. I'm not a massive fan of it, it's okay, but like it's just not as good as the other ones really. Because the third skin makes it all blue. But I actually like this one because it slightly changes depending on the angle you're looking at it. As you see from here it kind of looks like it's four white panels and two blue ones. But then you go over here and you see it's all actually blue. And also I think the blue just works a lot better and makes more sense for the interior. So as I said the other ones have the exact same exterior except for the time of the Doctor one, which is quite different. It has the same key features, like the St. John Ambulance sign, the window colours, and the TARDIS blue colour, but basically everything else has changed. It's a lot slimmer, with much more wear and tear on the paintwork, as well as a very tall looking lamp. I don't know why, I just think it looks weird. Also, the frames on the windows look very thick. I don't know why they're like this, but they are. So overall, I'm not a massive fan. And that's kind of sad, because I quite like how it looks in the show. It has no extra skins, but it has a body group option. And basically all it does is just make the windows light up, so they turn grey and white. And if you use this on the door, it only affects the ones on the door. The default one has the interior used for the majority of 2013 series, except for a few episodes like Name, Day, and Time of the Doctor, which made slight changes, as well as the 2012's Christmas special The Snowmen, which also was slightly different. And I'll go through them after the default. Chances are that you know the basic layout of the interior pretty well, so it makes that popular, but I'll briefly go over it anyway. The console has so much detail, and every control seen in the show has been implemented in here. From the tiniest things, like these three little white switches, to the sonic dispenser, and of course the throttle. And then there's these two hanging monitors which by default show this image, which can also be changed to use the screen UI, and you can also toggle the scanners directly from the console, which just looks out into what the tires can see. Each monitor has two set positions it can go in, and this actually changes depending on the version you use, but in the default, this one goes into this position, and this position, and then this one goes from here, here. And then on top of the main console, there are these things which I call side panels, but probably have a better name. And like the rest of the interior, these are very accurate to the show. And they also have functioning controls on them, like the engine release and the locking down mechanism, as well as the music on these little grill things on both panels. And the last quick thing is that you can see there are many doors in here, like here, down here, and then over here. But this is actually the only one that opens up. And then as you can see, there's literally like nothing behind here, pretty much. Just the start of a hallway. It looks as if it's a work in progress, but I can guarantee you that this will never change, and I'm actually perfectly fine with that. Let me explain. Because this add-on is so accurate with the dimensions and the size as well as the texturing and everything, it means they can't really add anything else, like hallways for instance, especially when maintaining the same level of detail. Otherwise it will just make the add-on lag way too much and the file size will just be insane. So as much as I do like extra rooms and things, I don't really mind there not being any here, because I'd prefer a really good console room rather than an average one with subpar rooms and things. And then again if you do want a slightly less accurate Toyota, 
have with hallways and rooms and everything like that there's always the default one with its own set of pros and cons it is stylistically quite different as well and although the color scheme of this tiles is generally quite dark with these grays and dark blues and things the lighting overall is really quite bright and it's dispersed evenly across the whole place like the entrance the upper floor and under the console share pretty much the exact same lighting which i think only really works in a tiles like this just because there's so much going on if the lighting were to keep changing it would be a bit too much and just be overwhelming so i think this is quite a good balance the lighting around this place is quite blue but the bluest blue is coming from the rotor and it just looks really good i do personally prefer the darker and yellower vibe from the capaldi version but i do want to see like this one as well and i think it suits the 11th doctor a lot better pretty much every object here allows light to not really reflect but just like interact with it in such a cool way as you can see here and on top of that there are quite a few animations going on related to light in here firstly on the side panels there are these groups of lights which switch on and off of different colors every now and then which you wouldn't necessarily consciously notice but it does help make this interior feel a bit more lively along with these floor vents which slowly go dimmer and brighter dimmer and brighter and the iconic ones happen when you go into the vortex there's this big light strip around the edge which just goes round and round as well as the big hadron collider thing on top of the rotor and then even these lights on the ceiling and then everything else is what you would expect until you land everything just sort of speeds up a bit and then it just suddenly stops and if i just turn off the power this is probably my favorite part of this tardis I don't know why, but I just love the atmosphere of a really dim TARDIS, and this is just the perfect one. The rotor turns sort of sky blue and then goes into a darker blue. These strip lights stay on, and then the blue on the roundels flash. And then I may as well show you this really cool Easter egg while the power is out. Basically, if you come to the front panel and then click this switch and use both protocol activation levers, The power will go on, the tiles will go into flight, and it plays the majestic tale of Man Man in a Box. Basically, it's just mimicking the scene where Victoria and Clara enter the TARDIS for the first time, and it's just brilliant. There's also a variation of this easter egg in the Capaldi version, but I'll show you that later on. But now I'm just going to destroy the TARDIS so you can see the low health mode, which I'll be honest, I don't really like. Basically, all that happens is that the circular lights glow red, the roundel lights, floor vents, and monitors turn off, and there's this slightly red hue to the rest of the interior, which makes it feel a bit darker, I guess, but not really like an emergency sort of level. There's also this pretty generic alarm sound you can hear, with a surprising lack of cloister bells. This is just a perfect example of the add-on choosing to be more accurate, rather than actually good, because it was like this in the show the few times it was damaged. But my biggest complaint of this interior is that it just feels really empty. Like for a time machine that's supposed to be bigger on the inside, traveling all the time in space, I could even survive a tea spillage, barely. You'd think it to have some more stuff in here, some crazy sci-fi equipment, or even some more things to make it more like a home. The 12th Doctor's version does fix this a bit, but I'll get to that after I show the alternate 11th Doctor ones. The first one's from the 2012 Christmas special, The Snowmen, and it's actually the very first time this Taurus was ever used. The differences here are quite obvious. The first one you probably notice is how there's literally no floor vents, for some reason, until I saw this in the add-on, I never noticed this in the episode. However, the monitors are also different, as they're now held up by these sort of like weird curvy monitor stand things. And they also can't be moved. But other than that, it's the exact same. Including the exterior, of course. And then the name of the Doctor version is the same as the Snowman one, without the floor vents and things. Except the monitors are the same as the default ones, so you can actually move them and things. The day of the Doctor one is the one used in the 50th anniversary, and again, has a pretty big change. And it's just something I never noticed in the episode, somehow. The main platform has what I can only really describe as a step. After a bit of googling, I believe this was in the episode for when Clara rode the motorbike into the interior. But it's really quite random, but I'm very glad it's been put into the add-on, because it's just a crazy attention to the Detail. There's also a stasis cube on the console now where the sonic charger was. The time of the Doctor's the last episode to use this TARDIS, unless you include the phone call deep breath for some reason. Either way, this has quite a few changes. Quite an obvious one is that the rotor glasses for some reason tinted a bit green. It may have been the reflection of like a green screen or something, I'm not sure, but here it is. For some reason, it looks really bad. <laughs> but on top of that, this interior is slightly brighter and generally better lit, which is probably just done for the regeneration scene, let's be honest. And I don't know if it's something to do with like my map or something something or maybe it's just a glitch in the add-on but there's some weird weird shadows down here there's also now this white light strip around the tardis door and the back of the door itself is also slightly different seeming as a different exterior and the police box sign is now lit and only for this very specific version of this tardis there are two easter eggs on this console and they work in a very similar way basically there's a very low chance that when you use the coordinates panel it will play the Time Lord's message from the time with the Doctor. And then there's also a very low chance that when you use the phone, you will hear Handel saying, You 
must patch the telephone device back through the console unit. But yeah, that's about it for the time of the Doctor TARDIS. But as you can probably tell from all the different options and quirks in the 11th Doctor's version of this TARDIS, this was pretty much a trial run for this brand new type of interior. And it got changed around a little bit just to get the perfect combination just in time for the next Doctor and in turn the next four years. Unlike the previous one, the 12th Doctor's doesn't have a default. And instead, when you don't pick a specific version, it will just choose a random one. So I'm just going to show you them in the order it displays here. However, there are three different exteriors for this version. The two Series 8s and the Series 9 are the exact same as the Time of the Doctor one, but there are two exteriors from Series 10. There's the F box and the E box. The F-Box is very similar to the previous one, except it's got like even more dirt or whatever this stuff is on it, which I'm not a massive fan of, but again, it's accurate to show. It has the same default window colour, but the lit body group option changes it to be blue and white instead of this grey colour, which I actually prefer. And it even lights up these two signs as well. And then the second option is called Tape, which is apparently from the Series 10 episode Knock Knock, but I have absolutely no idea what this actually changes to the exterior. I can't notice anything. I can't see any videos in line of anyone noticing anything. I don't know what happens. The E-Box is pretty much the same as the 11th Doctor's one, except once again, it's got all these scuffs and marks and things all over it, at least more than the other one did. And also the paint is quite a lot darker on this one. The first skin has the main four black panels, and then two bright textured panels. And then the second skin is the same as the first one on the 11th Doctor's one, which just darkens the textured windows. And then the final skin has four grey windows and two bright textured ones. So overall it is quite a good exterior. And the inside doors are the exact same as the 11th Doctor's one as well. Because these two just changed the exterior, they're actually four interiors available here. For the most part, not too much changes in between these, but because there is no default, I'll show you the fundamentals of it all with the Series 8 Part 1 interior, and then go through the rest. Okay, so obviously the lighting here is very different from the previous ones. The main lighting is this orangey-yellow colour, mixed in with this much darker atmosphere, especially around the edges. For instance, this lower level still has a mix of orange reflecting off everything, but it has that sort of darkness you would expect from being the underside of everything. And then other than the lighting, the only other significant change that these bookshelves and mirrors and things on the top level. These are only on the left side for some reason, and at face value seem quite random, but I actually think they're a very good addition. It has a nice layer of homeliness, and although the rest of it still looks very sci-fi, or in other words, nothing like a house, I think that mixed with the sort of down-to-earth, intellectual sort of vibe you get from the bookshelves just works perfectly with the 12th Doctor, especially when he was a university professor and then a time traveler on the side. And if I'm being honest, I think the entire Toyota trademark just works so much better better with the 12th Doctor. And on a side note, the throttle sound in this title is, is just the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Now, that was actually any different, but for some reason I just prefer the Hadron Collider and Circular Light animations in this version. I have no clue why. It might just be because it's in a sort of different environment, or I'm just going insane. The default look of the monitor has also changed. I don't know why, but I do prefer this one to be fair. But once again, I want to show you the power off and low health modes. So the easiest way to do that is just to pull this. And then we can crash. This one is quite different to the other one because when there's no power, it's just pitch black. Pretty much all you can see is just the vague reflections of the metallic objects, but even that's still really hard to see. And just before I show you the low health mode, I want to show this interior's version of the power up Easter egg. I just hit this switch and pull these levers. This time it mimics Bill's entrance to the TARDIS, which interestingly means that it doesn't go into flight or anything, because obviously it didn't in that scene, but it means it just looks a bit random, there's just some music playing and the power turns on, but it still is cool and it's good music as well, so I'm not complaining. The circular lights slowly flash red, and then these new upper level lights really are flashing a lot. The floor vents and the monitors turn off again, and the general look of the interior is a lot more red than the other one. Oh, and of course the cloister bed is back as well. And then the Series 8 Part 2 version is extremely similar. In fact, the only difference I can tell is that it's a bit brighter, and it's actually kind of a good middle ground between the Part 1 and the 11th Doctor's version, so I actually quite like it, although I still do prefer the first one. The Series 9 version has the same lighting as the first one, but also has a bunch of roundels on the lower wall, which I think improves the general look a lot more. Then on the console, there's this phone port, I think it's called, which is from Face the Raven, and then the Sonic dispenser now gives the 12th Doctor Sonic instead of the 11th. I don't know why it does, because it's only used for literally two episodes of Series 9, and then when you're on flight, the new lower 
around us follow this sort of circular light pattern. They could have done something very similar to the Twice Upon a Time TARDIS, where one of these roundels opens up and you see some brandy, like in the Husbands of River Song and in some Series 10 episodes. As I said, both these Series 10 options have the same interior, and they're only different because of the different exteriors they provide. This is the exact same as the last one, but it has a similar sort of lighting to the Series 8 Part 2 interior, except it's probably a bit brighter and more white. Oh, and by the way, this TARDIS' version of the phone call Easter egg is the 12th Doctor saying, and this is what the normal 11th Doctor 1 sounds like. Flora! And just before I show the customizable version, I may as well show the rest of the easter eggs. In this TARDIS, if you use this twisty thing, and then pull the protocol activation levers, it plays the theme from the day of the Doctor. And if you do the same in the 12th Doctor's TARDIS, it plays the Capaldi rock theme from before the flood. And probably the coolest one I've seen is that if you use these, twist this knob, and then pull the red lever here, it will ask you to subscribe. The 2017 to 2012 custom Toyota TARDIS is basically a canvas where you can pick and choose features from both of these and make a customized hybrid TARDIS. There's also an extra add-on you can get which adds pre-made custom lighting mods and I'll go over them as well. But first I'll show the default ones. With all the default settings, this is what the TARDIS looks like. This exterior is the Type 50 TT capsule, which you can get by default in the Comedian circuit. I'm not sure why it's this rather than the Type 40, seeming the Doctor's TARDIS is a Type 40. But either way, it allows for a new entrance in the interior, and it just looks crazy. I don't know, it's, it's, yeah, it's something. I do think this sort of hallway entrance is a bit too long, but it makes sense when you see the closing animation. And also this interior door actually looks really good and it furthers the theme of the interior in a sensible way. The rest of this interior is just a mix of the 11th and 12th Doctors with some extra custom stuff like this dark blue lighting. I mean even the sound design is a mishmash of both interiors. Although with the default settings pretty much everything in here is random so every time you spawn this in it will look slightly different but this is the general look of it. I don't think it's quite overwhelming. There's a lot going on in here. Like I said earlier if it becomes too complex it just kind of throws you off. The next version is called Dark Blue Custom. And it is very similar to default, except you just can't customise it basically. And all that means is that it looks like this every time you spawn it in. This one's called 2012 Orange, and it's what you'd expect really. It's the 2012 interior from the Snowmen, but it uses the Capaldi lighting. And it just looks weird, like it looks normal, but when you properly look at it, it just it throws you off a bit. I still can't get over these ugly looking monitor arms. And then this is 2015 Blue, which is basically the reverse of that. This is the Capaldi 2015 interior with the Matt Smith blue lighting. And it looks even more weird here because you can actually see everything properly. And there's six different custom lighting options from an add-on made by Poogie the Goose. And they are a bit out there, but they're still cool. And there's still all these settings to go over. So I'm going to quickly whiz through all these because they are worth showing, but I just don't out of time to properly go in depth. The first one's called Smith Green. And it's basically just the default 11th Doctor TARDIS, but with this very green lighting. The second one's called Poogie's Blue, which is a custom bluish purple lighting option in the 12th Doctor's interior. And unlike the others, it's sort of stronger towards the edges, and as you get towards the middle, it kind of dims out a bit. This is called Missy's Purple, and as the name would suggest, it gives it a purple lighting, which turns Capaldi's TARDIS into what Missy's TARDIS looks like in official art and fan art and things, which you may have seen before. Classic White uses the Type 50 exterior, which means it has a door way and then it has a similarly mashed up interior like the default but then it has this very blinding white light which i think is just a bit too bright the last one uses capaldi's interior with this weird yellow lighting in the center but then it sort of turns more orange as we get towards the walls and things yeah i'm not a massive fan of this one if i'm honest there are over 50 options in the settings most of which i have mentioned in some detail like the roundels the monitors the bookshelves and more but there are some i haven't talked about at all or i've just skimmed past it a bit quickly so i want to go over them now firstly there are three vortex options this is the 2013 one. Basically, it just has a red vortex on this side and a sort of blue purple one on this side. But then there's this like really big black divider in the middle, which I just hate. I never used to mind too much, but now there are a lot of add ons which get rid of this and it just reminds you how bad it looks. And then this is the 2013 B option. And unless I'm going insane, I'm almost certain this is the exact same as the last one. The final one is the 2014 one, which was used all throughout the 12th Doctor's era. And I actually really like this vortex. The sound section is probably the most in depth one and just demonstrates the amount of detail put into not only the sound design, but the add on as a whole. Because every single alternate version has its own 
own unique set of sounds that slightly change according to the show. And for obvious reasons, I can't show all of these, but I can show a select few from the default 2013 and then the 2017 one to show how it varied over five years. So with the 2013 settings, this is what the time rotor handbrake sounds like. And this is what it sounds like in the 2017 one. And then these color switches sound like this with the 2013 settings. And with the 2017 sounds, they're like this. The protocol levers sound like this in the 2013. And the 2017 ones sound like this. And then in the 2013 one, the throttle sounds like this. And then one of my favourite ones is the throttle with the 2017 sounds. Although I do prefer the 2014 Part A one. The interior colour section mostly just has options from previous interiors, but there are two custom versions here. The first one is the default one for this TARDIS, which is the dark blue, but I'm not a massive fan of it if I'm honest. And there's also another one that's bright blue, and yeah, they weren't kidding, it is quite bright. It's basically just white light with a bit of blue around the console. I think it's a bit too bright around the console area. But to be fair to it, it doesn't actually look that bad. There are a lot more options in the settings that I haven't covered, but just so you know, you can mix and match them and create your own hybrid interiors. There are also multiple other Toyota TARDIS, and actually just like a lot of really good titles in general. So if there are any you want to see a video about, let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, you may as well watch my review of the brand new First Autos Titus add-on, because it's definitely one of my favourites of all time.